of conspirators to justice. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-proclaimed mastermind and four other defendants, face arraignment today. And some families of 9-11 victims traveled to witness the proceedings. I'm from Brooklyn, and you know what? You face your, you face your fight. I want to see him eye to eye. That's the man that killed my sister, him and the other uh, cohorts, or whatever you want to call them. That hearing is taking place at the U.S. Naval Station in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And NBC National Investigative Correspondent Michael Isikoff is there for us live. And Michael, with a good Saturday morning to you, tell us what's going to happen this morning. Well, there's a lot of uh, unease and anticipation about what's going to happen here because nobody really knows. In just about uh, two hours, uh, the uh, uh, colleague Sheikh Mohammed and his four co-defendants will be led into this uh, courtroom here at Camp Justice and for the formal arraignment uh, of the, on the charges that they plotted the 9-11 attacks. They'll be informed of the charges against them. Uh, they'll be asked if they accept their military lawyers, and they'll be asked if they want to enter a plea. But there's a lot of roadblocks along the Away. For one thing, military, the, the defense lawyers uh, who've been assigned to represent them are going to raise some very significant motions objecting to the rules here at, uh, at Guantanamo, saying that they've interfered with their ability to represent their clients, their uh, mail to their clients has been monitored and inspected, uh, they've been unable to get translators, so the judge is going to have to deal with those motions. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, what Khalid Sheikh Mohammed will do is the big question question here this morning in past court appearances. He's railed against the United States, bragged that he planned the 9-11 attacks from A to Z ex and expressed his interest in becoming a martyr. But there's some indications this morning that he and the other co-defendants may be planning to fight these charges. Uh, and how that's going to play out, uh, we're all going to be watching. Yeah, I can about imagine. And talk about the families briefly who went down there. I mean, this is such a difficult time for them. Um, what are, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? I mean, we heard from that one gentleman who, who said, you know, it's time for justice. Do people believe yeah. that justice will be served? Well, the ones that came down here, uh, uh, by and large, do. I talked to Eddie Bracken uh, yesterday, the one we just saw, and mm -hmm. some of the others, and they all are um, believe that these uh, that these military trials will bring justice, and they say they want to see that justice. But you remember, uh, Alex, there's been enormous controversy about these uh, military trials. Uh, the first military commission, President Obama halted in 2009 when he took office. His attorney general, Eric Holder, tried to have these men tried in federal court in New York City. There was a huge political uh, uh, opposition about that. Uh, and now it's back here in Guantanamo, the facility that President Obama wanted to close. And there remain big questions about whether this military commission system, which is new and untested, is going to be able to uh, uh, adequately try these people, and particularly in the court of public opinion. Will these be seen as fair trials? That's the big question that hangs over these proceedings. Yeah, it is a very big question. Michael Isikoff, many thanks for the live report. We appreciate that. So in the turn of all this, everyone, here's what we're asking all of you today. As court proceedings begin for the self-proclaimed 9-11 mastermind, we just say KSM there for Twitter uh, purposes, will there be justice? Please talk to me on Twitter. My handle is at Alex Witt, and I'm going to get to some of your tweets throughout the day today. Let's go now to more on the self-proclaimed mastermind of the 9-11 terror attacks and four accused co-conspirators, as today they face arraignment before a military commission in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Joining me live is MSNBC military analyst. General Barry McCaffrey. General, good to see you as always. Thank you for joining us, sir. Morning, Alex. Uh, let's talk about the difference between trying the suspects in a federal court versus a military commission. There was so much made of that. Obviously, they've decided to do it in a military commission. Yeah, well, we certainly have tied ourselves in knots. Uh, Ten years later, we're finally getting around to bringing these five uh, indicted uh, conspirators. They're going to be arraigned today in Guantanamo. There'll be probably a couple of hundred family members watching it live, either from a military post in the U.S. or actually on site. Um, and it's in danger, obviously, of turning into a zoo uh, where the accused will try and put the CIA, uh, the Department of Justice, and the U.S. Armed Forces on trial instead of themselves. Yeah. How concerned are you about um, the element of fairness here, sir, and the ability for this trial to put to rest concerns about whether they get a fair trial and whether justice is delivered? 
Yeah, well, I think some of it's preposterous. This is our third attempt to find some way to bring them to uh, justice. I, I'm convinced the commission, as it's now constituted, is probably an extremely uh, fair uh, way to go about uh, bringing out the evidence and determining guilt or innocence and adjudicating a sentence. So, you know, they, some uh, first-rate people have uh, so-called reformed the military commission process. Uh, there was a good argument to do it in a federal court, but uh, but there was a political disaster when the Attorney General uh, tried to do it in New York City in a federal mm -hmm. court. So the political blash, backlash was ferocious. Uh, the military commission undoubtedly will be scrutinized by the world community and attacked by many, but why shouldn't it work? I mean, it, it's the same general procedures we use to uh, for 2.4 million men and women in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm curious about the kind of evidence that you think they will be able to present in court, because we know that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was subjected to waterboarding 183 times, according to the Associated Press. These new rules forbid the use of the evidence or testimony derived from torture or cruel treatment. So what will we hear? Well, you know, first of all, it was shameful uh, that we abused some of these detainees under our control. As I understand it, there's only three that formally we say were abused. I think many more were, including some who I think were killed. But uh, having said that, they've now excluded any evidence that was obtained under coercion. Uh, so, again, I don't see uh, why this would necessarily be any impediment to an objective, fair trial. The judge is world class, the prosecutor, the Rhodes Scholar, a uh, brilliant young Breedair general. So, I, I think we ought to be, have some confidence in the, in the process they've set up. How long might this process last? Does a military trial move more quickly than a civilian trial? Well, the, the procedures actually are, are uh, surprisingly similar. This is not, of course, under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, but it's a uh, variant of it. Uh, I think there's a good chance this will go on forever. I mean, today's the arraignment. Will it turn into uh, an attempt to exclude, uh, the, you know, the, the nature of the process they're being subjected to? Will, it, will they turn it into a zoo? Uh, he, uh, Muhammad tried to plead guilty at the last military commission hearing because he wants to be a martyr. So uh, it's hard to know how this will turn out, but hopefully they're all uh, frightfully dangerous people. I've been to Guantanamo. Uh, we've now got the worst of the worst incarcerated there. We just don't know what to do with them. It is uh, going to be a fascinating trial, and we thank you for your insights. As always, General Barry McCaffrey. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Alex.